This is Blue Collar Millionaire, Blue Collar Grind, Millionaire Mind. This is a reaction video. Let me pull it up to Comic Artist Pro Secrets. His video, here's how Marvel Comics swindles its creators out of big money and how you can avoid it. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe to the channel. Like the video, hit the notification bell so you never miss a video and share the content. So, um... I just checked out uh, Comic Artist Pro Secrets uh, channel today, and I like his channel, um, and I like this video actually. The reason why I want to get my two cents on this, do my reaction to this, is because I found that a lot of the exploitation that occurs, um, specifically with Marvel Comics, towards its creators, uh, is, is very similar to the way the music industry exploits its artists. And so that's that's the biggest thing that I want to talk about because um disclaimer here, I am not uh I am not well versed on the ins and outs of the comic book industry. I've never been a part of it, never held a job in it, never tried to, never researched it. The the only thing that I know is what I just started listening to and watching when it comes to um Ripperverse our comic artist pro secrets um so I'm learning little by little as I go uh but I do understand business um I have been a failed business owner and a successful business owner up to this point um and I'm actually working on two new businesses as we speak but I wanted to talk about exploitation um don't sell yourself the corpos. It looks like Marvel really, really um, dicks its creators. Um, dicks its creators pretty hard. But the type of contract. So what? What? Uh, Comic artist pro secrets brought up is that the type of contracts that um, creators sign with Marvel. Um, there's a twenty-five thousand dollar incentive if you create an original character that ends up in a movie um however the way the legalities of the contract are worded is very easy for them to dwindle that amount down when and if it actually occurs that one of your original characters that you created for marvel ends up in a movie and uh comic artist pro secrets um, basically said that he had a character that ended up in a movie, uh, in an X-Men movie, actually. A character that he created, and um, he was expecting a $25,000 check. He ended up with $900. And then he basically justified it by saying that, well, you know, you only get $25,000 if it's a, your character is the titular character um, that the movie is based around. So they're basically the star in the movie is about them then we'll give you twenty five thousand. What she goes on to say uh, is a shit deal, and which I myself have to agree with. That's a shit deal. So you can only expect twenty five thousand dollars from Marvel. You give them a new creation in a character, and you can only expect a twenty five thousand dollar check from them for that character appearing in the movie. If the movie is actually primarily about that character, the story and everything, and they're they're the main character of the movie. They're who the movie is about. I'm like that, but that's a trash ass deal because I mean, the amount of money that the MCU makes for them to say, yeah, we'll give you 25 racks. You know, if you created this character who we decided to base a whole movie on, but you making a billion off a movie, <laughs> a, a failure of a movie, which I've been looking at videos recently about Thor, Love and Thunder, and how it's, how it's considered to be this big failure. A failure for Marvel is six hundred, seven hundred million dollars, <laughs> bro. So you telling me that you was only gonna reward somebody twenty five thousand, and a failure for you is six, seven hundred million, bro? Y'all trash as fuck. But I think if you are trying to be a comic book pro, I certainly suggest that you subscribe to Ripper. Um, young Ripper Five Nine, you subscribe to Ripperverse Comics channel, um, and you subscribe to Comic Artist Pro Secrets, um, so you can gain an understanding of the industry. Um, 
and how not to get fucked how to do it independent how not to get fucked um because it seems to be too many ways to get fucked in the industry and uh man i would only imagine that it's across the board like this in entertainment but so my area of specialty when it comes to understanding the legal workings of the industry is the music business um so i'm gonna do an origin story series the origin story of blue collar millionaires so you can kind of get how i came to be my background stuff that stuff like that um so you know you know more about me as a character but with the music business um i spent you know i spent my youthful years i'm in my 30s now i spent my youthful years learning about the music industry trying to find my way into it and i mean i took every i took every angle that i figured i could take i i i did the blog blogger angle um i tried to get in at the one i tried to put myself on the map as a writer and a blogger so that at some point i could figure out a way to become a writer and editor for a major publication whether online or offline um uh i i pr- produce i still produce um try to take the producer angle try to take the producer songwriter angle while i write and produce and record the demo record for you angle um i um i mean i'm a drummer um i was in a, a pretty decent uh alternative band at some point well i say a punk band but we did we did punk rock our mains were punk rock blues mixed with some funk and hip-hop and uh that shit was fire uh so I did that. I did the band thing. Um, what else? I mean, I pretty much try. Oh, I, I was a DJ. And actually, um, as a DJ, that's actually the most success that I saw. That was actually my original successful business was being a DJ. Um, COVID hit and I retired. <laughs> Think about getting back into it, but it's not a high priority. But I did make a good amount of money DJing enough that I could call that business venture a success. Um, but in the process of learning everything I did in the music industry and about the music industry, I learned that it was a terrible idea to sign a stat, a standard record contract to enter into most record deals is fucking stupid from a financial standpoint. Now, if you want fame, uh, then, you know, if you happen to end up being a priority artist on on a label roster, you can end up with a decent amount of fame, but that won't necessarily translate into money, especially if they um, spend a shit ton of money on your marketing and the budget and your recording, all the other shit. Like you, you're not really going to make no money. Now, you can be famous and make money, but um, there's a lot a lot of the artists that have a level of fame, you know, that you would think have a good amount of money are pretty broke um and it's because the record contracts have a shitty it's it's a shitty standard and it's shittier now um but back when i was doing the majority of my research and learning and all that you know you were talking about uh 11 percent as a standard for you on a record contract so every record you sell you get 11 percent, and that's after that's after your label makes back all the money that they spent on that particular project so let's say you do an album let's say you got a let's say a two hundred thousand dollar recording budget and a hundred thousand dollar marketing budget right um you are three hundred thousand dollars in debt to the label if they give you an advance like a fifty thousand dollar advance to live on during the time of you making and producing the album then now you three hundred and fifty thousand dollars in debt to the label so what's going to happen is when you start selling records albums cds whatever um you won't see a dime until they make all their three hundred and fifty thousand dollars back then after they recoup operation recoup fees after they recoup then you will start making 11 percent per record sale so let's say make it easy your record is ten dollars you're going to make 11 percent of that ten dollars which is a dollar and ten cent that's trash uh especially especially if you are your own songwriter which generally rappers write their own material um, a lot of these singers don't, especially in pop, but pop and R and B really, they don't they don't write what they're singing. It's a professional songwriter that's putting it together. Uh, uh, oftentimes, it could be a uh, production and songwriting team that's putting it together, and so that artist isn't even making that eleven percent 
Take that back. Take that back. Sorry. Let me rewind. The artist deal that 11 percent you're signing that 11 percent, I think, regardless if you write it or not, it's the artist deal. But you make more. Um, you make additional money on publishing if you are the writer or the producer. If you write and produce your own material, then you gonna you, you get the maximum amount that you would get in a record deal. So it's just real dumb to to sign most record contracts. And and then the other thing about it is um usually if you sign a record contract and you're not coming in with clout and a name for yourself and you have the leverage to actually negotiate for a better deal you're actually giving them the rights to your name so whatever your artist name is your stage name they own your stage name and so if you end up leaving that deal right and you go and do records for yourself or somebody else now you have to do that under a different name (laughs) <laughs> that you became known for because they own your name on top of that most of these deals because artists just artists refuse to educate themselves most of these deals uh you also give them the right to your master the master record is when you make a new song the final version of that song is the master they own the master and if you really dumb they own the master recording which is the record as it exists in its final form. But then they also own the publishing, which is the actual music that was made for in the lyrics. So the way you separate the two is a master recording. This is what that final version of the song sound like. But the music that was produced in the lyrics that I wrote, that can be reproduced again. Like you can take the same lyrics the same chords and all the elements of the final production and it can be reproduced by another person redone you know you know what i'm saying covered whatever um so that's the publishing and then there's the master recording and oftentimes artists do not own their master recording so all the money that can be made off of that record as a master you really not entitled to it unless they write it into your deal and they're not inclined to do so um Record deals are really shitty. They're really shitty. And I only brought that up. You know, it's my first time talking about music on this channel. We probably talk about music a little bit more. But I brought it up because learning just a little bit from this video um, by Comic Artist Pro Secrets, I could see how the comic industry, when it comes to the big comic book companies, would like the record industry would do you when it comes to these bigger, big record labels. Like, they don't don't sell yourself the corpos because they just want money and they they will squeeze your creative juices in order to maximize how much money they can make and they're going to minimize how much they reward you for actually giving them a product that sells well you know what i'm saying so it just it, it really it like struck me the similarities um and the fact that you know if you sign a bad record deal like you could become a double platinum artist, but you still in the shitty record deal. So your label can make millions off your album, single, whatever, and, and you see a few thousand. Like they they don't care. So don't be dumb. But ownership and creation, man, um when if you're a creative, ownership and creation is, is paramount. You really, if you if you're getting started, even if you're not getting started, if you've been doing this for a while, you should really think about retaining ownership over your. Personally, I'd rather have control over everything I make and see little to moderate success, um, but I control it and and I'm happy versus I give that ownership away to somebody else my hard-earned created content songs whatever they they make it a smashing success and i have a name out there in the world but the amount that i make off of it is just the it's not worth what i gave to them you know what i'm saying 
I'd rather be little known and just be happy doing doing my thing um, than sell off to somebody else just just for it. Because really, a lot of times when people selling, signing these deals and selling themselves, it's really for the fame. It's, it's not. I mean, you have to be extremely successful to actually get some some amount of fortune. And we talk about artists who, you know, album after album over multiple albums, they're selling a, a lot. And they're doing shows where a lot of people are coming out, you know. So don't be a dummy. <laughs> don't be a dummy, man. Don't be a dummy. Uh, if you want to be a creator, you should probably follow creators that have achieved a level of success that you would want. And they've done so independently. And you can look at their story, their journey pick up the tips you can pick up from them and then try to do it your own way with a little bit of knowledge and understanding but don't be a dummy uh, don't give yourself away to these corporations because they ain't gonna give you shit back and the little pennies that you do get you probably gonna be salty and then you're gonna end up a pissy broke this is blue collar millionaire blue collar grind millionaire mind like the video share the video subscribe to the channel hit the notification bells let me know what y'all think in the comments have you uh done research on the music industry have you researched the comic industry or are there other industries i'm not considering where they treat the creative just like that in the shitty do you have your own experiences where you've been shitting on when you given you know you given good content and they just give you uh dirt back blue collar millionaire i'll holler